welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we have uh, an expert joining us, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk to you about creating labels in Koha. And there's a couple different ways to do it. So today's Monday's Minutes is going to focus on pros and cons of using either the label creator in the Koha cataloging module, or if you remember, in the tools prior to that. In the next week, we'll do a two-part series where we talk about the label plugin. So today we're going to focus on the pros and cons, when you should use the label creator in Koha's cataloging module. And then next week, we'll talk about when you should use it in the label plugin. So let me go ahead and share my screen where, you know, we brought in Lucas, who is like an expert in working with our partners in um deciding between these two tools. So we thought we would have this opportunity to talk about it and break down the specifically today, the Koha label creator, and then next week, the label plugin. And if you didn't know there was a label creator plugin, there is one. So wait for next <laughs> week. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to pop into the label creator. And for anyone who's not familiar, there's a couple setup. The um, label creator has the first step that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and create a label template or use one of the existing ones in your system. For our Koha partners, we do put in two commonly used templates. So I'm going to open one of those by hitting this manage and go ahead and hit template. You can see we have both the Avery and the Spine. So I'm just going to click this edit so we can kind of see this page and how it's constructed and then talk about the pros and cons of how this could be used for your library or how maybe there is some hindrance in this. This is based on one sheet of all the same label sizes. So this is assuming that you have a sheet of labels that are all the exact same size. And if you have these and you can't find what the sizes are and you don't wanna get your ruler out, Google it first, because nine times out of 10, you can find a template or something else that was created, whether it's Brodart or Dempco or Avery, whoever it is, generally you can find that. So don't get your ruler out first, try Googling it because usually you can find it. If there's any concern at all, you can certainly um, give it a shot and do a couple of times because in the next one, in the layout, we'll show you how Koha is going to give you a nice guide of what it believes your spine labels will look like. So now the next step, once you do that, we're going to head over to the label layout. And that is what we are going to put on each label itself. So I'm going to click over to this spine label. And again, you know, you have the opportunity to be able to identify if it's a barcode, if it has bibliographic information, if it has both and how it is laid out. This does give you an option of the fields that are available to print on the label. And this probably would be something that could potentially be a con if there's something here that, um, or something that's not here that you wanna print on the label. Lucas, what would be a good example that people ask for here for something that they want to print on a label that would be better suited for to use the plugin? Um, there's a, a lot of things, but uh, any mark field could be printed. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then just other arbitrary things that may not exist in a field can be printed with the plugin, whereas this tool's a little bit more rigid in what pieces of information you can put where. The thing that I mentioned earlier, just that draw guide boxes, that would be helpful to know where your um, labels look like when you're printing it out as a test. And then another pro or con, depending on how you're looking at it, is the splitting of call numbers. So Koha is going to split your call numbers based on the classification of the item. So whether that's a Dewey or a Library of Congress. So it is going to take the standard of how it believes it should be split and split those when it's creating those labels. Now, if your library alters that splitting rule a little differently, then the plugin probably would be your choice there because there's no way to natively through the Koha label creator to tell Koha to split somewhere else. And I would say this is definitely a pro of this tool in that it will split them that way. If you have your classification sources listed for each item, um, whereas the 
label plugin won't split by default. We have to use uh, another lot, another set of logic and template toolkit to do so. So the functionality is there on the plugin. It's just more cumbersome, probably, to tell it how to, to split it according to what you want. Absolutely. It's a little harder than here where you just have to check a checkbox. Check, check, check any checkbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just Lucas' question, what if I don't click split call numbers? Where will it split? Uh, it's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. I think it won't split at all, and it will list your call number one, uh, one row. Okay, I'm going to test it out and we'll update the blog post to show you what it looks like. Those really long call numbers. Um, anything else here, Lucas, that is kind of um, restrictive for libraries using the the label layout? Um, just, uh, uh, it's not quite as flexible as the plugin, which uses CSS and HTML. Uh, for example, fonts, there's a, quite a few choices, but not as many as I can uh, offer with CSS. Um, and the same for justification, right? We have left, right, and center. Um, we can do quite a bit more things in terms of aligning labels where we want them when we use HTML and CSS. Okay, then the next step, once you've set that up, we're gonna go ahead and just do a test file just so you can see how it looks by default using one of these um, templates and layouts. Um, we have batches in both the plugin and the label creator. So the same process works. So I think that's a pro. You can use both the Kohan native label creator and the plugin. Um, you don't have to choose. So you could have some special ones to do and then other ones you would do in the plugin. I'm going to go ahead and just export this audiobook file. Hit that export selected. It's going to ask me which template and which layout where it starts in the label position. And Lucas, this is all the same for the label plugin, pretty much. It, it does have all these same options. Perfect, yes. perfect. And then we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and download this as a PDF and grab that PDF just so we can look at it. And there we can see it is taking what's in my item call number. So I have audio and then the first three letters of the last name. And in this case, I have audio and then um, the call number and then the first three letters of the last name just to kind of see how it looks. And it's split correctly. And this gives you a, uh, the output is a PDF, um, which is a, a con here is, I can't change these here at this point. I, I'm stuck with these labels. Um, we're using the plugin. We will have an option to insert breaks, extra characters, take characters out, things like that. So something to think about. Something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can always um, imagine those like one-offs, Lucas, where like, I just want to have like, you know, my state abbreviation above in a specific state book where it's not in the call number and it's really just some random text I want to put in a one-off, then mm -hmm. that would be really useful for the plugin wise. Because as you said, it's a PDF, so you can't do much about it. Right. Well, this was kind of fun, right? Revisiting the label creator. And, and I think we teased enough about the label plugin to make people want to watch next week and, and explore that option for those unique labels that we create. Okay, well, have a great week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.